Folks, it seems like yesterday we were celebrating rates at about six and a half. Now with a very hot inflation read, uh, we now see rates very likely to be over 7% today. So we have been here before. We've seen rates 18 months ago break six. Then they broke seven. Then they broke eight. We're now going back over seven. So I want to know what is going to happen to the housing market? Is our buyers used to it? Are sellers going to stay put? Does the lock-in affect all of this going on? We're going to talk with Beth Traverso, top 1% national agent, and see what she is seeing in the real world. All righty, Beth, 7% rates. They are back. Hey there. Yes, they are. So, so, so good to be back here and chat with you and everybody. Um, we're watching it very closely, like everyone is. That I think a lot of people were under the impression that rates were going to continue to go down. And so it's interesting to see, oh, wait, they're going up. And what will that do to the market? And it's too early to tell. So all we can do is just speculate because the real estate market doesn't move as quickly as, say, stocks or other other markets do. It's a delayed reaction. And so um, what I'm expecting is one of two possible reactions. The first one could be that it puts the brakes on things a bit and it could slow down our spring season. Flashback to about May or so of 2022 when rates really started spiking. I remember, I remember uh, it put a massive break on demand. Um, yeah. However, there's I, also this... Go, go ahead. I remember you and I had an episode. We were talking about open houses where nobody showed up. Yeah. That was that was May of, of 2022. And yeah. sellers were really starting to panic. There was a lot of stress in the market because people that were planning on selling their home for a certain amount and anticipating that they were just, it was a given they were going to be able to do it and get multiple offers. And then all of a sudden that was not the case. And so it was a, a bucket of cold water being dumped on the market and people in it. So what's interesting is what I'm hearing now is that there's a lot of people who are just back in the market accepting whatever rate there is. And there, there is that, you know, there's a certain urgency that people have for their life events mm -hmm. that are going to push them to move forward regardless, as long as they can still afford it. And there still are a lot of people in my area. I'm in the greater Seattle area. There still are a lot of people here that can't afford it even with the higher rates. So it's more for some, it's more of a matter of trying to time the market. And that is the other side of it is, what if people were trying to time the market? Because I've been hearing chatter out there, like wait a little while to buy because the rates are going to go down further in the spring. Some were thinking it was going to happen in March and then now maybe not. So some people might be thinking, oh, I'm missing the boat. It's time to jump in now. So we might get even more people in with rates a little bit higher. Yeah, I've been studying the consumer for a better part of 30 years. And it's really going to be interesting because I actually think with real estate, we actually have to talk about two different consumers. So we spend a lot of time talking about demand and we should, but let's spend a minute on supply because you can't buy something if it ain't for sale. Exactly. And it feels like, and again, you're in it more than I am, at least in your area, right? I'm more national. It feels like as rates got down to six and a half, we were unlocking at least a little bit of supply. What I mean by that is the move up buyers were going, okay, I've got all this equity. I had another kid, whatever. And we're going to move up. And, and a move up buyer is so important for the market because it's supply for a new first time buyer. And it's going to absorb some of the, you know, the stuff above the median, which is really slow. Now that rates are going up, I actually wonder if that little bit of supply that was coming, and you see the numbers, you see Alto's research talk about it, right? Uh, new listings were up, I think, 12% year on year. I wonder if that evaporates. What do you think about supply numbers? You know, it, it probably will restrict supply is my guess. I'm still not seeing much of an uptick in new listings yet. We're, we're, we've managed to close the gap in our area year over year. Um, I'll be interested to see once February's numbers are out, how that changes. If we start to get positive year over year, new listings, I know our overall listing inventory is down significantly year over year, about 28% in, uh, King County. And that just shows the absorption is just really high. Even if the number of new listings is, 
the same. So it could be that move up buyer seller is still, I think a lot of them are feeling that lock-in effect. I, I, most of the people, folks that I work with that are, um, moving up or moving out or downsizing listing, you know, whatever their case may be, people that are buying and selling tend to be doing it in another area. They're selling here to move to another area. And that's a compelling enough reason for them to let go of that rate because they don't want to live in this area for whatever reason. They're moving to be closer to family. They're retiring someplace sunnier. They're going wherever. And they don't want to own their home here They're anymore. They want to roll that equity over. They want to um, not be a landlord for whatever reason. It makes perfect sense for me and you to think about, Hey, maybe this house should be a rental, but there's a lot of people that just can't make that leap because of sometimes beliefs they've held or just their financial plans. Well, again, I think a lot of people that are leaving high priced areas like Seattle, like the Silicon Valley, they're not as price or rate sensitive because a lot of them they're, they're taking up, you know, bag full of money and they're yeah. buying something for cash. Mm -hmm. right. So the rate rates don't matter if you're paying cash. It's it's one of the oddities. Um, no, and a lot of cash buyers. We've seen a definite increase ever since rates started going up. The percentage of cash buyers just seems to be much higher than it used to be. Because if somebody, even if somebody could pay cash, but if they can finance at three, why yeah. not finance at three? You keep your cash invested in something else. You know that's what a lot of savvy people are doing. So where I am still seeing a lot of cash buyers in the vacation and second home market is oh, overwhelmingly cash, which is interesting because you might think that that market might shrink up and really suffer in a, a market shift. But there's I'm still seeing we're talking areas in the like mountain communities that are about an hour or so east of Seattle. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of cash purchases there still. I've watched that market really closely, mm -hmm. too. So I'm, and I'm seeing I'm a fair amount of them here, mostly at the higher price points. So let me ask you about that vacation market. Uh, again, it's, a, it's an interesting area. I think a lot of areas got inundated with Airbnb, VRBO, or kind of short term. And the, like Palm Springs, the prices yeah. just went bonkers. Yeah. And now, because of restrictions or regulation, they're seeing huge price cuts. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm curious, are these cash buyers getting price points that I might call disrespectful? Or are they just playing the asset game and, and paying less price and they're just pay paying the asset game, playing the asset game wow. and paying the price. They're purchasing in areas that are specifically designed to be Airbnbs. Yeah. These developments were made with that in mind. So yeah. it's in an HOA that encourages it because mm -hmm. the, H the, the association manages the rentals in a lot of those in one area in particular where they get a huge cut, they get up to 50% of the proceeds. Ooh. And so they're not going to let go of that. Yeah. What's interesting though is is seeing I know it's kind of taking us in a different direction, but seeing that the there's a massive oversupply in short term rentals in those areas, and I think that's doing more to kill it than any kind of regulation or anything else okay. because there's ex a, a huge amount of new construction being built at different price points in the area. You know, some might be around seven hundred, which is kind of low for that area, up to two, three million on the higher end and they're mm -hmm. selling. And it seems like there's a never ending supply of new construction out there. So mm -hmm. it's killing the short term rental market, but I'm not seeing any widespread regulations in those towns where they're just okay. prohibiting it. But mm -hmm. those homes, like the $2 million, $3 million home, isn't really going to be a rental for anybody anyway. You know, it's either no. going to be just a second home for someone or uh, they'll put it in that vacation rental pool and get a little income mm -hmm. off it and just watch the asset go up in value over time is the plan. Right. So, that, so we're talking about supply. I do think rates going higher, it has to bring back the lock-in. Just It's just mathematically mm -hmm. works that way. But now let's talk about demand. And we're going to find out because it could go either way. My sneaky suspicion is the people that are looking to buy now, they've been on a roller coaster with rates. And frankly, the only time 7% feels good is when you remember eight. Yeah. And eight was like eight weeks ago. Wasn't so it's still, ago. It, mm -hmm. yeah, it's still very much in, in the back of their mind. So I suspect if you're, if you're entering the spring selling season, you're tired of being a renter, uh, you certainly don't like seven. You like six and a half better. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. But you also don't want eight. 
I, I'm going to guess the demand stays active, but I could be wrong. I'm thinking I mean, the we, demand stays there. We'll see. Yeah. I'm waiting to see what happens with the bidding wars this week. Mm. You know, today's the day. Tuesday is usually offer review day in our area. And so the bidding wars will be happening today. And so I'll be curious to see how that goes and if that shifts at all. I don't really don't expect that it will. I don't think it's going to, if anything, some people might say, well, instead of, this might sound terrible, but instead of 150 over, we'll bid up to 100 yeah. over, you know. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like it's, a, it's a math equation, mm -hmm. right? And if you are getting a loan, a six and a half versus seven, the payments, I don't know, it depends on the loan balance, obviously, but it's it's hundreds of dollars, depending yeah. on, on the size of the loan. But also you could get seller credits. I mean, it's, it's, um, I suspect we're both, we're both leading the same way that the demand's not going to be crushed by seven. Because yeah. again, it's not the first time. The yeah. reason that May 2022 stands out to both you and I, it's when rates broke six. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we haven't been above six in like four years or something. And it happened so quickly that it was complete, complete whiplash. And so, it was a massive shock to the system, uh, unlike any I've ever seen in all my years in the business. And we're not seeing that now. There's not a sense of panic, but I do wonder if we might see a little bit more. The demand side may even increase slightly if people feel like they're starting to miss the boat. But I don't yeah. know if that's going to be. I think it's going to it's been hot and I think it's going to continue to be the same hot for yeah. at least. Well, the next it's month it's or all two. about supply. It's all mm -hmm. about supply. I know we. I know you talked about having a. A, a listing where I think you got like 12 offers or right. something like mm -hmm. that. Um, where, what, what kind of supplies come on the market in the last week? Almost nothing. Oh my God. So in my area, my East side buy box, there's almost nothing. And so, and I've got one coming on the market tomorrow that I expect should be pretty popular because it's a great house at a great, great price point. And so that will be my test to see my boots on the ground test to yeah. see how is it changing things. But mm. I expect it's going to be just as popular. And if anything, if we don't have 12 offers and we have nine, you know, that's fine. Yeah. We only need one. I, ideally, need I like, one. I, ideally, I like more than one, but you know, but if yeah. it's just one, that's okay. So yeah. I always coach my sellers to be okay with, we do what we can with what the market gives us, but mm -hmm. you know, we can't, you know, we don't know if it's going to be a bidding war, but I'll know by next week. And I expect that this will be pretty popular. I don't yeah, think so we're going to see a huge shift. Yeah, I'm curious what you're, you know, again, you're a top 1% agent, you network with other like-minded and experienced and quality folks. Uh, the spring selling season has started for most of the country, right? The day after mm -hmm. the Super Bowl historically has been that day. What what are other agents, top agents saying is going on? Are they, what what what, what, are, what are agents saying these They've days? got their running shoes on, you know, we're, we're, we're snapping back into that pattern. Like we kind of learn how to work in different markets, depending on what is happening. And so we learned to shift to, is it multiple offers? And you have that process. Is it not multiple offers? And you have a different process. And so those of us that have our boots on the ground and we're in the thick of it day in and day out, we catch these temperature shifts from week to week. And, and we do uh, network with each other and bounce things off each other. Like, what do you think about this price point in this neighborhood? What should we be expecting? And Agents are always calling me, asking for feedback on how things went with my pending listings, and I'm in touch with them, and so we can see what's going on. We have buyers looking. We're asking to see what we're going to be up against, and that's just good homework. So, um, But what we're, we're all seeing is nobody's sensing any kind of a slowdown at this point, and we're kind mm -hmm. of back into that, the busiest spring season that we've seen in a couple of years, so not quite like wow. early 2022 because that was just <laughs> – total chaos, you know, and, uh, not sustainable. So, and this, I think probably is a little more sustainable. I don't think we're mm -hmm. going to have a big up and down, but this is the time of year when we tend to see prices go up and then they start to taper off a little bit over the summertime is how, how right. our market goes. So it looks like we're following that pattern. We'll see if seven changes it, but I kind of don't think it will. Yeah. And the last thing to kind of ask you about is that I'm really honed in on below the median and above the median specifically 2x the median mm -hmm. uh are you are you seeing the pricier stuff sit longer i am yeah there's a few more houses on the market at that upper tier price point um but we are seeing activities really heating up in those price ranges too so mm -hmm. in my area that's around two and a half to three and over um so that's, that's where we are you know yeah. and anything in the in the in the 
starter home price tier, which is up to about probably eight, 900 or so or below, especially if something comes on at 650 or seven, there are still some of those out there in our area. It's just bananas. And I really feel for the first time home buyers because you get a lot of cash yeah. buyers at that price point. Um, a lot of people who are downsizing, paying cash, they're selling their more expensive home and they're buying that or kids, you know, grown kids buying them for their aging parents to live in. Mm -hmm. If they're small one level home, they'll just buy them cash sometimes and let their parent live there. And there's a lot of that. And so the first time buyers are up against it. But what I would say to not be so discouraging for everyone is that there are opportunities I'm seeing at all price points. And it's usually where the seller and or the agent maybe got it wrong in some way, shape or form. It doesn't look good. Your There's junk, pictures, junk everywhere. Listing. They didn't, they didn't clean off the kitchen countertop. Like the photos are terrible. It happens. I love those. Look for those ones because you will find your opportunities there and they exist in every market. So I'm seeing, agree more. if anything, an uptick of those, I'm seeing more where it's like, for some reason they didn't pay for professional photos. For some reason mm -hmm. they didn't clean yeah, the junk out of there. They're, they're saving pennies and, and it's going to cost them thousands. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, I'm seeing it across the board, almost every area. You just got to be very, it's easy to skip over those ones that you kind of see on mm -hmm. your search over and over and over just go oh yeah that one but then maybe take another look at it yeah. on the market 30 days 60 days great advice they exist and people want to dismiss them but um you really shouldn't because oftentimes no, that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with those houses yeah that's where the opportunity could be especially mm -hmm. in this market uh beth you're amazing you're a big part of the community you're going to be in vegas with us but if somebody yeah. wanted a referral to a one percent agent in their area how would they reach out Right. The easiest way to reach me is through my website, BethTraversoGroup.com. And I'm looking forward to meeting people from the One Rental at a Time community down in Vegas. Should be, be fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks.